So when people ask me what I do for a living, I tell them I run a marketing agency. I don't say I run an influencer marketing agency. And I thought this was probably my problem. I thought it was probably a hang up from having worked in humanitarian work or academia or tech. So I decided to ask some of my team, and it turns out they do the same thing. They say, I work in marketing, not I work in influencer marketing. So why? Where does this aversion to saying the word influencer come from? <laughs> well, the media and negative press coverage of influencer marketing and social media might be one of the answers. But this, as someone who has really cherished and valued finding purpose in my work, this isn't really my experience of the industry, and it's not the legacy that I hope to leave behind. And it sounds like it isn't really affecting people's usage of social media either. So today, globally, 4.76 billion people use social media for an average of two hours and 31 minutes a day. We're not putting down the apps. And then the financial side of the industry has grown astronomically as well. So currently, the, influence, the um, creator economy is valued at $250 billion, but that's expected to nearly double and reach $480 billion by 2027. So with this not stopping our behavior, what can we do to have a more positive impact on the way people feel about themselves? Change those negative headlines. Well, there are lots of people behind the scenes in the industry trying to create something more positive. There have been movements like filter drop in the UK and laws in France and the Nordics that insist that when influencers use filters or digitally edit their face or body image, they have to declare it. And that's a really good start, right? It's a, a great beginning, but I still think we can go further. And I think fundamentally, we can use the opportunity from social media to make marketing more inclusive and to make people feel more beautiful. So one of the things that I've loved about marketing is that new behaviors demand new thinking immediately. And social media represents a sea change in the way the industry is running. So there are three fundamental things I'll talk about today that challenge the way we've seen marketing in the past. The first one is a broader distribution of marketing dollars. Sounds quite, you know, archaic, but think about TV. So when TV commercials were the be-all and end-all of marketing campaigns, say 15 years ago, where would the money go? So it would normally start with there'd be a creative agency or production company, potentially with a big celebrity name attached, who would get paid to create the ad. And then a media agency would get paid to put that ad everywhere. But now, there are so many more actors and it's so much more complex. You have the TV ad, you have out-of-home advertising, you have radio, you have paid social media ads, you have connected TV ads, you have search ads, you have brands' organic social media content, and you have a myriad of influencers. And this money goes into the pockets of way more people. You're probably thinking, why is that important? Don't influencers have enough money? I, I'm guessing everyone here, because of the way the media talks about influencers, thinks that they are loaded. But in reality, that's not the case at all. Most influencers struggle financially. So only 4% of influencers across the globe make over $100,000 a year. Why is that important? It's important because 70% of their income comes from brand deals. And you notice the other 30% is pretty evenly distributed across a lot of other factors. So why is this important? It's important because marketers now are choosing and are in a really powerful position to influence who is able to become an influencer. Marketers can choose who they want to be involved in a campaign, choose to pay them, and then that influencer can create more content, and that's how they can survive. So it puts marketers in a very, very powerful position to change the, the marketing landscape. The second thing is that social media is more, makes campaigns possible to be more inclusive than ever before. So again, let's go back to our old friend TV and think about the bad TV adverts you've watched. 
Why are they bad, right? You have 30 seconds to tell a story, which means you can at maximum include two, three characters. That's not a good way to connect with someone. No one really watches most TV ads and thinks, oh yeah, they really understand me. TV struggles to be inclusive. And then when you look at the expense of creating a TV ad, it's so prohibitively expensive that brands cannot afford to run to create multiple ads with different demographics or different diverse representative people from society because it's so expensive they can't afford to do it. This is where social media marketing is transformed because you can have hundreds of influencers involved in one campaign. You can celebrate diversity in terms of race, gender, sexuality, disability, body shape, body size, skin tone, ethnicity, religion, all in one campaign. And if you have hundreds of influencers in one campaign, your campaigns can't look tokenistic. It's about actually showing the diversity of the world that your customer lives in and connecting with your customer. The other fascinating thing about influencers is that they create their content in their own tone of voice. They create it themselves. So they are choosing the tone of voice they want to use. They choose the creative angle. They choose how they think your product will best connect to their audience. And they also choose the aspects of themselves that they want to celebrate, which is really important. Because if a brand gets this right, a campaign can genuinely look as though it's effortlessly diverse. And this actually will also help sell products for brands. So um, Gen, there was a Gen Z survey of why they bought a specific beauty brand in the previous year. And more than any other age group, Gen Z said they purchased a product because the beauty brand had included diversity in their advertising. So this is going to make a difference to marketers and a difference to consumers and people at the same time. And the third thing that's really important about how social media has created this change for the way we do advertising is that now brands are held accountable to a degree they've never been held before, particularly to niche communities. So again, let's go back to TV. 15 years ago, if you saw a TV advert that offended you, what would you do? Write a letter or an email? What, to the brand, to your local newspaper, to an advertising standards agency? You'd write this letter, and then you'd sit and wait and hope for a response over the next two months. Your criticism and your voice was not immediately or publicly visible. But with social media, that's transformed. We all know how quick people are to leave comments, good or bad, if they feel like a brand is being disingenuous or a person's being disingenuous. And this is really important because Gen Z now are demanding authenticity and social cultural fluency from brands in a way we've never seen before. So if you um, think about brands now, they're held to standards where they not need just to look like all of the target customers they're trying to reach, but they also need to speak like them. Um, I assume a lot of people in the room have TikTok. If you haven't, it takes up a lot of your time if you download it, so be careful. Um, but what you'll notice is that content and the way we consume content has phenomenally shifted. People are really interested in the reality. They don't want to be sold an aspirational image like old advertising campaigns did. They want to know if a product really works for them. And you'll see on TikTok that people want to see the before just as much as the after. What we want now is a connection with the reality of who we are. And this has some huge practical implications for the way we buy products. So on Pinterest, you can search by hair texture and type. You can see if a product has worked on other people with the same hair texture as you. On TikTok or YouTube, you can search for people with the same skin conditions as you, the same skin issues. 65.8 million views. You can make sure that a product will really work for you before you purchase it. Entire beauty ranges have launched in consultation with influencers with 
vastly inclusive skin, skin tone ranges, and that's something that had never been done before. Even recently, a beauty brand launched uh, a campaign targeting aging skin with all the influencers in it aged over 40. So people know that a product will physically work for them before they buy it, and they can call out if it doesn't. They can hold brands to account. But we also need to go deeper than skin deep. So we expect brands and influencers and people on social media to relate to and understand us in deep emotional and mental ways that they've never been asked to do before. So this is Eat With Eden. She's a TikTok creator who was recovering from her own eating disorder. And one of the things she found hardest was normalizing eating with people again. She was so triggered by having a meal with someone, she wanted to think, how can I help other people? So she started creating TikTok videos where she eats a meal and talks to the camera so that other people suffering from eating disorders could feel like they were eating their meal alongside her and begin to normalize sharing a meal. For brands, getting to this level of personal connection with, with your consumer is very difficult and very intimidating. We're asking brands to fundamentally understand us in a way they've never been asked to before. And you can see Gen Z are changing the way they use social media from their predecessors. There's a lot more about privacy and closed social networks. So we've all probably seen or maybe tried apps like Snapchat or Be Real or Discord. Thank you. Um, and those are closed networks where actually your content as a brand will only get seen if people want to share it with their family and friends. So if you stop and think about this, what would inspire you to share a piece of content, an advert, with your family and friends? Probably very little. But normally it's if something's funny or useful or educational. So brands are being held to this really high standard where they have to connect with people very personally. Personalization's the name of the game, and influencers are the best ways to speak like humans and connect to a wide group, wide group of communities that are the customers you're trying to target. Gabe Adams Wheatley is a really interesting example here because her content doesn't focus on her disability. It focuses on beauty. What we're fundamentally asking for from brands is an understanding of all the complex people we are. We're asking them to market in a reality, complex, messy existence and reach all of our different identities. So, what does all of this have to do with feeling beautiful? Marketing has always fascinated me in this sense. We have real power to legitimize what people are aspiring to be. We have the power to define what beauty looks like. And inclusive marketing makes people feel represented and like there's something worth being celebrated. It's a really powerful position to be in designing marketing campaigns. And I spoke to um, this 19-year-old girl about it. She's called Nikki Lilly, and she has a condition called AVM, which is a very visible disability. From the age of 11, she's had over 250 surgical procedures, she's finished school, she's created content, and she won a televised baking competition. <laughs> she's someone with a lot of talents. And I asked her, why? Why did you appear in this catwalk? You've never wanted to model, and I saw this image, and I didn't understand. You've never said fashion or modeling is something you're interested in. Why did you do this? And she said, Jenny, growing up, I never saw anyone in media or marketing who looked like me. I never saw anyone with a visible disability. So I never felt celebrated or beautiful. And she said, my job now is to be that role model for other young people who grow up looking different. And I will take every opportunity I can to show them that they deserve to feel celebrated. I thought, wow, I wish more marketers thought like this 19-year-old. <laughs> if we consider the impact of who we put in campaigns and how we include them, we have the power to make people feel beautiful, both online and offline, through inclusive and representational marketing. 
And I think we should use that power very wisely. Thank you. Thank you.